In this presentation, we will consider the uh, main blocks of the uh, embedded boundary scan test infrastructure. After watching this presentation, you should be able to explain what are the main building blocks of the boundary scan test infrastructure and also how they enable uh, control and observation of any uh, given functional beams. Uh, every boundary scan device will comprise the uh, following four test access uh, port or TAP pins, the uh, serial test data input and output pins, TDI and TDO, uh, that are used to scan in and out test data, meaning test vectors and test responses, the uh, test mode select or TMS pin, which defines the operating mode of the test infrastructure, and the test clock or TCK pin, which is independent of the system clock. Uh, notice also that this representation shows the core logic in red and the test logic in white. Uh, the set of all boundary scan cells make up what is called the uh, boundary scan register, which will be connected between TDI and TDO. Uh, when these two multiplexers, the data multiplexer and the data instruction multiplexer, are connected as shown in this slide. Uh, if we want to access one particular device only, uh, we may wish to bypass all the uh, boundary scan registers in the remaining devices. Uh, and given the complexity of modern circuits, bypassing a single boundary scan register may save more than a thousand test clock cycles. And that is the reason why the uh, IEEE 1149.1 standard defines the so-called bypass register, uh, which comprises a single test cell. Uh, this will make the total length of the bitstream much shorter and therefore minimizing memory requirements and speeding up the process. Uh, by controlling the data multiplexer, we can select the bypass register in all devices except the one we wish to access. But uh, how can we control the data multiplexer? Well, um, as you can see here, the uh, data multiplexer is controlled by another register that is called the uh, instruction register. Uh, according to which instruction was loaded into this register, the embedded test infrastructure will operate in one way or another. So in the beginning, what we have to do is to shift in a bitstream that will define the required operating mode. But to shift through the instruction register, we need to select the uh, lower input of the data instruction multiplexer. So the question is now, how do we control the uh, data instruction multiplexer? Well, the data instruction multiplexer is controlled by this block called the uh, Test Access Port Controller, or TAP Controller. Uh, this is indeed a small finite state machine that is controlled by an external input called TMS, or Test Mode Select. In the uh, very beginning, what we have to do is to drive an appropriate sequence of ones and zeros to TMS so as to bring the TAP controller to the state that sets the uh, data instruction multiplexer to the required operating mode. We can then shift in an instruction which will define how the data multiplexer is going to, to work and we are finally able to start shifting in and out test vectors and test responses. Uh, throughout this process, the TAP controller will transition to different states as required by each test operation, as we will see in a following presentation. Well, and finally, there may be optional data registers, such as the uh, identification register, which is uh, a 32-bit code informing uh, what is this device, what is its version, uh, etc. 
Uh, other optional data registers are also possible, as we will see in the Texas Instruments devices that will be considered in this course. Uh, you may check their data sheet, which is available in attachment in Canvas. And that's all. Thanks for your attention.